Hi, it's Stephanie Greenfield. I'm on my way to meet the king of costume jewelry, Kenneth J. Lane, in his fabulous townhouse, one of the only remaining mansions on Park Avenue. He's gonna tell us about style, truly defined chic for us. I can't wait, I've been dying to meet this man. He's been called a genius, a sorcerer, and the king of costume jewelry. One thing is clear, the name Kenneth J. Lane is synonymous with glamour. Since bursting onto the scene in the 1960s, Kenneth has been creating faux jewelry that is more exotic and fantastic than the real thing. Kenneth is equally known for the exotic life he leads, traveling the globe and mixing with socialites, celebrities, and royalty. His home is a historic Stamford White mansion in Manhattan. Kenneth J. Lane is truly as unique and special as one of his incredible creations. We are sitting here with the king, and we're actually sitting in the king's castle. But the difference is with this king, if he were to be wearing a crown, he would have designed it. So you are all blessed to be able to meet Kenneth J. Lane. I'm so happy to see you this morning. Thank you for allowing us in your gorgeous home. I'm very happy that you're here. Time Magazine dubbed you as the undisputed king of costume jewelry. I'm the king? You must not read your own press. It's more important that other people read it. Oh, good, good. This is starting <laughs> off just the way I like it. Thank Here's you. a new bracelet. Is this for me? It's for you. Okay. You always wear the hinge on the inside. Oh. Hinge on the inside. I should know that, being a retailer for 15 years. But what's so interesting here, it's not about as you say, you know, real or faux. If you didn't know real, you wouldn't be able to make something so magnificent in faux. Yeah, and, and if the lights are right, and if... Um, the lady is if, right. If, if a rich lady was wearing this, um, everybody would think it was real. Then I do sort of fantasy art deco, you know, which is fun. You could hang this on a door. You could put this in a frame. Yeah. You could wear it with a t-shirt. Oh, you could definitely wear it with a You could wear it with a gown. You yeah, could absolutely. see Sarah Jessica Parker wearing it. Absolutely. This. She wears yeah. a lot of your things. And she wore an awful lot of my stuff in Sex and the City. And what was the reaction to that? Did you get a ton of emails? A uh, lot. We were on the cover of one necklace, a big butterfly was on the cover of Time. Let's compare, you know, the women that really helped in the journey of making your jewelry iconic because they're icons themselves. Jacqueline Kenny Onassis, Audrey Hepburn, Elizabeth Taylor. And now we have the modern day, you know, true doyens, as we call them now, Sarah Jessica Parker, Nicole Kidman, Madonna. And there are parallels and differences. There are great differences. I mean, I don't know these ladies. Mm -hmm. I've met some of them, but, um, Elizabeth Taylor, I did know well, and she was a great character, you know, she was a great personality. Um, Audrey Hepburn was, was a great friend of mine, and the world was in love with her. Um, I'm not sure the world is in love with any of these other people you mentioned. Well, the press might be. I think that is so well put. In the olden days, as I say, Audrey, I'm not sure Audrey Hepburn had a press agent. If she had a press agent, it was sort of to keep her out of the papers. You were on the ears, on the fingers, on the necks of the most fabulous women on planet Earth. Mm. And they also had, you know, real jewelry. You know, some of the oh, finest yeah. jewelry, you know, that's now on auction for millions of dollars. The Duchess of Windsor, for instance. She had one of the greatest collections of precious jewelry in the world. and when she started buying my stuff. I think it made her feel younger, more with it. Um, in her 1967, I think it is, Christmas card, she's wearing a necklace of mine. And the last picture of her and the Duke in Vogue magazine, she was wearing a necklace and earrings of mine. That's an endorsement. That was a great endorsement. <laughs> What do you think truly defines style? The women of great style, they didn't only have style and what, the way they looked. It was the way they lived, it was their attitude towards life, their friendships. There's all kinds of style though. There's um, elegance, which is one thing. There's chic, which is different than elegance. 
And there's one's own style. Elizabeth Taylor has her own style. I wouldn't say she's elegant or chic, but God knows she has her own style. I'll tell you a quick story. There, there was a party in Venice on Onassis' boat, the Christina, and all the girls on the boat were marvelous. They were all properly dressed in either a white top and blue pants or blue top and white pants. And Liz Taylor came on board, and she was wearing a white lace dress, white lace stockings, white lace Oxford shoes with white satin bows, and a handbag of white straw with white flowers on the top. Great big thing. And some diamonds. Well, she looked absolutely unlike anybody else. <laughs> However, nobody could look at anyone else. And how do you think that compares to some of the women today? Well, I mean, I think Lady Gaga has style. Whether you like it or not, it's style. That's so funny that you said her because she immediately, when I was thinking of a parallel, that kind of shock value compared to look at me. Notice me. Notice me. Notice me. Notice and don't me. forget me. When I look around, I'm just filled with questions about your life and your travels. This is my, like my study here. And the pictures are Orientalist pictures, which have come from all over the world. Um, they're going to the Metropolitan Museum, by the way, eventually, one day, because I have a room there, kind of straight line gallery. Is anything in there now? Yeah, there's their own collection, and um, but these are all going to go there, and it's my room, it says kind of straight line. What's it like to have created looks for the world's most iconic women? Find out more in my exclusive interview with legendary designer Kenneth J. Lane at guilt.com slash unwrapped.